Greetings and salutations. Today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of home repair. But first, let me give you a little backstory. As many of you know, I have a son who's somewhere on the autism spectrum, and one of his most favorite things in the world to do is play with water. If he's near a bathtub or a shower or a sink or a pool or a lake, he needs to be in the water. And that, uh, that goes for toilets as well. Because what kid doesn't like to throw things in the toilet, push the little lever and watch it disappear like magic? Well, such is the case with, uh, with our toilet and the master. He put something down in the toilet and uh, my wife came to me and said, Rick, there's something wrong with the toilet. It's, it's making gurgly noises and it's not flowing water very fast. <laughs> First, now it's going to make a liar out of me, but it's not, it's not flowing properly. It's not filling back up. And if I put some toilet paper in there. Okay, there you go. So this is only like the third time I've had to do this. And it's not that it's that difficult of a job. It's more of an annoyance than anything else. And maybe you know how to do this. And um, I would encourage you to watch along and, and enjoy my misery. Because you, if you've done this before, you know it's not that difficult. It's just kind of an annoying and disgusting job that needs to be done. It's a home maintenance issue. Maybe you're a younger fella and just started a family and your child too has discovered the joys of flushing crap down the toilet. You know, like toys and stuff and clogging the crap. And, and this is how you rectify that situation. I suspect there's probably a small plastic toy in there that has bridged the gap between where the, the flange meets the toilet and that toilet paper is just creating a dam there. So it's best just to take the toilet off. First thing you need to do, if your toilet is flowing water, if it can flow slow, that's fine. But if it's flowing water, clean the toilet. Because there's nothing more disgusting than having to remove a toilet that is, you know, got feces and, and you know, urine on it. That's just disgusting. So I'm going to clean this toilet. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this toilet paper clog. See how it breaks up that toilet paper. Oh, you can see it's flowing again. Okay. So right now I'm going to go get some toilet bowl cleaner. I'm going to clean this toilet up really good. And then after that, you want to turn the water off to the toilet. You may have a closet valve where the, the water line comes out of the wall. You might be able to shut your water off there. This house is plumbing. It's all packs and there's a manifold in the laundry room. I go over there and I shut the water off so that I won't flood my bathroom because that would be a bad thing. Shut the water off after the toilet's cleaned, not before, after. And then once the water is shut off, you need to flush the toilet and get all the water out of the tank. And take your plunger and plunge as much water as you can out of the toilet bowl. You see that down there? See that little bowl, this part right here? Comes out of there, and this is like a P-trap. So you need to, to use air and with, the, with the plunger and push as much of the water out as you possibly can. You're not going to get it all, but you can get a lion's share of it. And maybe go get a disposable sponge, and you can sponge out the rest of it. After that, Take that cap off, expose the flange bolt. There's one on the other side of the toilet. Back these nuts out, and then you can take the toilet off 
off the flange. I don't have a wax ring right now, so I gotta go to Home Depot. I'm also gonna pick up some stuff for the bus. So before I even start, I need to go to Home Depot. Do you care to join me? Come on, let's go. Back from Home Depot, I've got the uh, the wax ring. I got the extra thick one because it's extra thick. Now I'll clean the toilet bowl and I'll shut the water off and remove the flange bolts. Oh, come on. I'm going in. If you haven't got one of these quick disconnect toilet seats, oh nasty, you didn't need to see that, sorry, you should get one because it makes cleaning under those those things a lot easier. My boys need to improve their aim. Nasty! Now we go turn off the water. Ah, <sighs> been in the toilet. Off. Okay. Put that up, make sure the water is out of the bowl. I'll manually remove as much of the water as I can. Now I just use a sponge to get all the water out of the bowl. Now if you're toilet hasn't been removed in a very long time this bolt will likely be pretty corroded and uh, don't use power tools to um, to tighten these bolts just use hand tools because uh, if you over tighten you can crack the porcelain and that means you're gonna be out a few hundred dollars for a new toilet it's a beautiful knife it's, this knife just gives me the fizz okay water's off take the water line off the toilet and again if this hasn't been done you might want to inspect that gasket right. okay it's broke loose from the wax seal now I just need to move it over here remnants of the wax seal let's see what was obstructing the toilet here oh yeah a little dalmatian bye doggy get as much of the wax off the toilet as you possibly can as well as all the wax off the flange a wire brush and get all the crusties off of it. I'll put the wax seal on, take it out of its pack googe. Try not to distort it too much. There. Just lay it right on top of there like so. You walk your toilet back in here and carefully set it on that wax seal. It's best if you lower it onto the seal nice and square. Whew, and it's getting steamy in here.
Now I turn the water on and check for leaks. Hopefully, there won't be any. There we go. Let's go see if there is a geyser. Looks good. The last thing to do is to caulk around the base of the toilet between the tile and the toilet. It gives it a nice clean look. But before you go ahead and do that, make sure that that wax seal has done its job and has sealed the toilet to the flange. If for some reason you didn't get it on right, and it's a little kibbywampus and that thing starts to leak, you want to address that immediately. That's not something you want to put off. I'll leave that uh, uncaulked for a few days and uh, see if, you know, just to make sure that, uh, that nothing is leaking around that flange. In my case, because I got a slab, uh, the potential is I could uh, pop tiles. But if you got a wood subfloor that this thing is attached to, the potential for mold growth and, and serious structural damage can occur if that flange is leaking. So leave it uncocked for the time being, make sure that it's not leaking. That job's done and now I can go do other things. Oh, like take a shower. Well, as you can see, it really wasn't that difficult of a job. It was just more of an annoyance than anything. If you've never done it before, never fear. It's not that big of a deal. Now you know how to do it. So if you like this video and you found it informative, hammer away at that like button. If you hadn't subscribed, click that subscribe button down underneath this window and the blue bell icon right next to it so you too can be notified of future uploads. Share this video with your vast social media network. If you're so inclined, comment in the comment section with any comments or questions. That's where they belong down there. And until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep the powder dry, and have a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.